they had come to <coughs> book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 and as you can see it's a, a glorious day a blue sky day uh, not a cloud inside and the sun uh, is shining uh, quite strongly and uh, just again another evidence uh, of God's hand uh, in creation and that really is our topic <coughs> uh, for this message and that is the work of creation uh, but we're going to look at it in a slightly different angle uh, this time so we're going to look at how the uh, creation in Genesis chapter 1 reminds us of uh, a new creation in Christ 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature or new creation all things are passed away behold all things are become new and we're going to see how <coughs> some of the things that uh, God did on the days of creation are the same thing that God wants in a new creation that is in those that trusted the trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and have got a new nature from God uh, so we're going to pray before we look at the scriptures our God and Father give thanks for this time together thank you for your word uh, thank you for uh, the fact that you created everything in the beginning and as John says all things were made by him without him was not anything made that was made. We thank you for all this, Lord. Thank you for your power and your wisdom and your majesty and your greatness. I just pray as we uh, look at these scriptures again uh, that you are speaking to our lives. Help us, Lord, to see what you're trying to do in our lives. Uh, to make us more like the Lord Jesus. So, Father, give thanks now. Just uh, pray for your help to read the scriptures in the Savior's name. Amen. We're going to read Genesis chapter 1, uh, and we'll read the first three verses just to start off with. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Uh, and so here uh, we see the first thing uh, in God's work of creation was that it was a work of the Spirit of God, and it was a work of the Word of God. Verse 2 says the, the Spirit moved. And then verse 3 says, God said, and there was. So we have the work of the Spirit of God and the work of the Word of God. And so the earth may move in its own motion, could not mend it, it must be moved upon. And so the Spirit of God uh, was involved in the creation of the universe. And then there was the power of God's Word. Psalm 33, uh, verse 9. In fact, Psalm 33, we'll just read the verses before it including verse 9 Psalm 33 by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth verse 8 let all the earth fear the Lord that all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him for he spake and it was done he commanded and it stood fast and so there we see the uh, clear truth that it was by the power of the Word of God. Uh, and so we see that the Spirit of God and the Word of God are involved in the beginning of the physical creation. But the same is true uh, of the spiritual creation as well. Remember, the Lord Jesus said, John chapter 3 and verse 5 Very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water. And of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And I think uh, that refers to the fact that it's the Word of God and the Spirit of God uh, that work in a person uh, to bring them to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we see in verse 4 uh, there was separation. God divided the light from the darkness. Uh, the darkness was not completely removed but separated from the light uh, and 2 Corinthians chapter 6 talks about the need for the believer uh, to be separate uh, and by that that means separate from the evil 
uh, that is in the world. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial, and what part hath he that believeth in an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God? As God hath said, I will dwell in them, and will walk in them, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, verse 17, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. But don't forget the last verse. I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And so part of that separation is separation from uh, darkness and the evil of the world, but uh, the uh, positive aspect of that is actually we get to have a fellowship with the Lord each day. And I think that's an amazing thing that God wants fellowship with every Christian every day and every part of each day. Uh, and that's an amazing thing. Uh, so we see that separation has two aspects in Second Corinthians chapter 6. Then in verse 6 and 7 of Genesis chapter 1, we see God set apart the waters below from the waters above. Uh, Genesis chapter six, Genesis chapter one, verse six, and God said, "Let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters. Let divide waters. Let divide the waters from the waters." God made the ferment or expanse, and divided the waters which were under the ferment from the waters which were above the ferment, and it was so. And God called the ferment heaven. That's not heaven where God lives. That's the like atmosphere above us. And even in the morning. By the second day. And so here we see uh, something that was set apart. God set apart the waters below from the waters that were above. And you know, there are some things in the Bible which uh, we don't understand uh, fully, but there are some things which are clearly described as the will of God uh, for the believer. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, that is, to live holy lives. Uh, and then the Lord Jesus told us how we live holy lives, John 17, verse 17, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. We can't be growing in holiness if we're not soaking in the word of God. And so just as there was a setting apart from the waters below, waters below from the waters above, so there needs to be uh, a setting apart and holy lives live for the Saviour. Then verse 11 on day 3, uh, we see reproduction. God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Here we see God not only created plant life, but he also set in motion the processes that make plant life reproduce. And that uh, is uh, a study in nature in itself. Uh, and so we see that the fruit, uh, the seed for the uh, plant to continue to reproduce was actually in itself. Uh, and then the opposite is also true uh, of the life of the Christian. God wants fruit from our lives, but really it isn't the fruit that comes from ourselves. It's really the fruit that comes from fellowship uh, with the Lord. Uh, John chapter 15, I am the vine, uh, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same, bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. And so the key to fruitfulness in the life of the Christian, of course, is to abide in Christ, is to have constant fellowship with Christ through prayer, through the Word, through fellowship with other believers, to be growing in intimacy uh, and fellowship with Him. Uh, and the more we draw from the vine, to use the analogy in John chapter 15, the more fruitful we'll be uh, as believers. Remember Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, it says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That's the fruit that God wants to see from our lives. Then day 4, uh, there was declaration. 
uh, God created the lights, the sun and the stars. And God said, let there be lights in the form of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days, and for years. And let them be for lights in the form of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. But God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. But God set them in the form of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from darkness, and God saw that it was so. Uh, and here we have a physical example uh, of what we're reading there in Genesis uh, chapter 1. It's very like, near impossible to look at the sun uh, without your eyes hurting, and yet Genesis chapter 1 tells us that God uh, created it. So on day 4 we have declaration. Uh, the purpose of the light it was to give markers for signs, seasons, days, and years, and that's still true even today. Uh, we're largely dictated by the position of the sun, the season, etc., and the movement of the planets and the sun rotating around the earth. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, uh, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. And so God wants the believer to be a light in the world. Then the position of the light, uh, God put the uh, sun and moon uh, in the heavens to give light upon the earth. So they were literally light givers, and the light must be above the earth, it is to shine on it. And remember that the Lord Jesus said, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Uh, and so we need to let our light shine. Then the preeminence of the light, verse 16, there was a greater light and a lesser light. And think of the words of John the Baptist, John chapter 3. And verse 30, he must increase, but I decrease. Then we have multiplication in verse 22 of Genesis chapter 1. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. This is the first mention of fill and blessed in the Bible in connection with multiplication. So the blessing was both a command and a provision for the continued multiplication of animals that God had initially created. Uh, and it reminded me of the need in our lives to constantly to add in uh, those spiritual ingredients uh, into our lives. Second Peter chapter 1, you remember Peter writes and says he won't be negligent. And he gives us uh, the spiritual ingredients, really a Christ likeness, that needs to be added into our lives. Beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and the virtue of knowledge, knowledge temperance, and temperance patience, and the patience godliness, and the godliness brotherly kindness, and brother kindness charity. Uh, and so those are the Christ like qualities that God wants to develop uh, in my life and in yours. Then day six, uh, there was confirmation or conformation. Uh, God is a spirit, so there can be no image or likeness in the sense of the uh, normal sense of those words. But God created human uh, in his likeness with an eternal spirit, moral consciousness, emotion, capacity to love and worship God. Also in the sense that humans can see, hear, smell and touch, speak and display Spiritual attributes, love, and mercy, and kindness, uh, they are things which are unique to humans. Uh, a cat can't be gracious, uh, a dog uh, can't be merciful, but humans can. And so we see the climax of God's creative power results in his own likeness. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. God said, let us make man our image after our likeness. Verse 27, so God created man his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Uh, <coughs> so God is looking for a display of his image in the new creation. Uh, 
and of course Colossians uh, tells us about this um, Colossians chapter 3 put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him and then verses 12 and 13 we get what that looks like uh, in terms of our character put on there for the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another there's seven spiritual qualities that really uh, can only be displayed by the new man and so that's what God is trying to do in the life of the believer is trying to through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and as we look at and contemplate Christ in the word uh, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 says we're transformed into the same image, changed into the same image. And that God wants that inner transformation uh, in our lives to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ day by day. And then day 7 there was satisfaction. In Genesis chapter 2 uh, we read that God rested. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made his work which I rest on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all the work which the Lord had God created and made and so here we see that God rested establishing the pattern for man's work cycle uh, he modeled the need for rest and that I don't believe has changed uh, even in uh, today's world so it goes right back to creation and the fact that God rested on the seventh day. And this reminds us that uh, we have an eternal rest, First Peter chapter 1. Uh, we have an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, which faded not away, reserved in heaven for us. Uh, and so there we see how the old creation reminds of the new creation. Day 1, we have... Uh, regeneration on day two we have separation uh, sorry on day one we have separation day two sanctification day three reproduction day four declaration day five modification day six uh, confirmation and, and day seven satisfaction and all these things uh, remind us of what God wants to do in our lives let's just pray Father thank you for your word thank you for the fact that you created this entire universe uh, we thank you, the psalmist said, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And so we thank you for uh, your wisdom and power and love and majesty which we see in the physical creation. Uh, but we thank you also for your purpose and wisdom and love and grace uh, in the new creation in us. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to work with us to make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ. So help us to... Uh, cooperate with what you're trying to do in our lives to make us more like Christ. So Father, we give thanks now and give you all the glory in the Savior's name. Amen.